Hello YouTube and welcome to another Proxmox tutorial. So in this video we're gonna talk about sizing CPU and memory in Proxmox. So are you ready? Let's get started. So as you may know sizing CPU and memory is a very very critical when you are actually creating virtual machine inside Proxmox. Okay. So a question that is often asked when it comes to creating virtual environment is how much CPU or memory will be needed in each node and how much to allocate per virtual machine. So for example here on my virtual machine I always it depends actually on the virtual machine but uh, here are some guides that will show you how to size it okay but you have to keep in mind there is a fact that uh, we will often run out of memory much sooner than CPU okay for a given Proxmox or any other host node but that doesn't actually prevent us from the sizing the best CPU and memory for our host okay so the first thing that we're gonna talk is actually single socket versus multiple sockets okay so a multiple socket node will always have better performance than a single socket regardless of number of cores per CPU okay so here for example for my Proxmox I have only uh, one socket so as you can see here I have only one socket okay so if you have actually the budget for that a quad socket node will always provide the maximum performance of any single socket configuration okay so keep that in mind if you have to choose between single socket and multiple socket always choose actually multiple socket node okay another thing that we're gonna talk when uh, regarding to CPUs is hyper trading okay so when it comes to CPUs one of the major differences between uh, Intel and EMD processors is hyper trading okay so you must know actually for the AMD CPUs all cores are true cores okay whereas all Intel CPUs have what we call hyper trading so hyper trading actually will create two virtual cores per physical core okay so this is one of the major difference between Intel and AMD CPUs okay so some people actually ask if we gonna actually enable or disable uh, hyper trading so from the different uh, performances or report that we get it appears that it's better to leave it on to the newer Intel servers so always keep hyper trading on in order to get better performances okay so saying that when you create a new virtual machine it's always a good start to start with small with VM resources okay so you must know a virtual machine is completely different from the physical machine and it needs to be treated as such because virtual machines they do not consume CPU and memory like the physical nodes okay so the best practice is to always provision CPU and memory resources uh, starting from the small ones okay then increase it as you go with your application performances that that why you have actually for example for this virtual machine here you have a summary so you can take a look at how much uh, memory has been consumed and how much CPU also is being consumed so for example for this virtual machine we have actually we don't consume CPU okay 
and the memory we are just here 66 percent so that's always good to start with the fewer resources that's why for this spy hole uh, actually uh, machine i have only allocated as you can see here one core so it's always better to start with the minimum and then take a look at the performances and to increase it as long as your application is running and that applies also for the memory and also for the disk size okay so keep that in mind okay and also when a very important thing when you allocated virtual cpus for single vm you should never exceed the total number of cores in the node so for example if your node had a total of eight cores you should never make a virtual machine with nine cores for example because this this will degrade the performance of the entire node and all the vm in it okay so keep in mind that also it's very very important and also you should note that uh, a virtual environment in a virtual environment more cpu and uh, memory for a virtual machine does not always mean better performance so it's not like uh, the physical one so if i located i located uh, more cores for example for this virtual machine it doesn't mean that i will have better performance because that will actually affect all the nodes and all the virtual machine on it okay so the first thing that you have if you want to summarize all the things that we have uh, actually said first of all you have to take a look at your memory total memory for your node and the total number of cores in your actually node so here for example i have a total of four cores okay and the memory i have here about 32 gigabytes okay and it's a single socket node okay so i should never allocate it more than four cores to any single virtual machine okay and always i should take a look at the cpu usage and the memory usage the server load also if i get in spike or an increase in that then i can return back turn off the machine and increase the number of cores but as i told you as a general rule you should never never increase the total cores that exceed your nodes okay and keep in mind as i told you allocating more cpu and memory and more memory doesn't mean that you will have better performances okay so that was just a brief uh, introduction to how you can size your cpu and memory for actually your node and all the vms inside your proxmox server as always i hope it has been informative for you and i want to thank you for viewing Bye-bye.